There's my dog. <laughs> Cute little thing. Now get back in there! <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. I am Jason Salyer, and today we're going to be discussing some shovels. Pros and cons of each kind of design. And we're also going to introduce our mascot. <laughs> this twisty bundle of energy. So, I think there's pros and cons to each of these kind of designs of shovels. And we're going to be testing them out a little bit and, and give kind of our two cents on which ones we think are the most ideal. Um, there's some folding models. There's some composite kind of polymer type materials. There's old school wood and steel, some heavier steels, and even fancy titaniums. Um, and really kind of which one would I prefer if I had to pick just one of these shovels is kind of what we're going to be talking about today. Tranquilo. Tranquilo, eh? Tranquilo. That's a good name for a dog. I'll name her Tranquilo. Tranquilo. <laughs> First few shovels that we're going to discuss are going to be the folders. Um, I think having a folding Ugh. shovel is a pretty big benefit just because of its compactiveness. Um, and I think that that would be a, a useful thing because you could stick it in a pack easier. It just takes up less space. Um, however, the downside to the folders, in my opinion, is going to be a lack of re reliability because moving parts, locking mechanisms, things can possibly break. Um, but not necessarily. This shovel right here, this is a German-made shovel. This shovel by itself um, weighs about three pounds, about three pounds, just this guy right here. It's a super, super dur durable design, really, really sturdy. Um, it can be adjusted, maybe, I say that, there we go. It can be adjusted by pushing a pin here and then rolling it to this 90 degree where you can actually dig kind of like a hoe um, or a mattock. And then it's also got a pick here that can be engaged. <laughs> Dog is crazy. God, yeah. Are you on meth? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Been eating out of the neighbor's trash again? <laughs> this one was made in 1964. Um, hey, quit that. That's my paper. I've had that for a few years, and yeah. because of the weight, I've generally used it just like in the vehicles. This one I carried and used a lot. Like you can tell, I beat it up. Yeah. Uh, the Glock, I probably carried more than any of them. And, you know, I've used all these at one time or another, and this is probably my favorite. It's got that collapsible handle on it which is pretty handy you could use yeah. it short if you wanted to or extend it out well the thing about it they're not cheap they're 50 bucks but easily so are the uh, everything else is you yeah. know yeah, they're more. All, the rest yeah. of them are i think these are yeah the thing i liked about the glock is i actually tried to break it mm -hmm. i sat out one day trying to break it and i couldn't yeah and uh it's it's light for what it is you know i i do like the the thing about the folders you know yeah if you have moving parts you do introduce maybe some complexity and thus possible failure, but that 90 degree head setting like that, I find there's a lot more utility. Careful, baby, that's sharp. There's more utility in this than there is like the, the Russian models. Mm -hmm. The Gerber weighs two pounds, four ounces. It's one of the heavier ones, yeah. second heaviest one. I've had that I just on... don't like the handles on those. Well, you know, that's kind of, I wish they had this handle on, on the Glock, really. Yeah. The, the reason for that, when you put this in a in a 90 degree configuration, mm -hmm. it enables you to to use both hands. Like if you're going to use do a slit trench, you, That's can, true. you can really move a lot of dirt by being able put to put your hands that. on each side. And if you're incapacitated, this arm's in a sling. I can still get in here and do some work with that one hand. So I, I don't really find that as a, a problem. Now, a buddy of mine runs a surplus shop, or did, it's closed now, and uh, he got a box of them back in from Afghanistan or somewhere, and this collar right here that you that you turn to adjust yeah. was split yeah. on like five or six of them. Yeah. So that was a common failure point. I've heard I, that. I haven't experienced that personally, but I did see it secondhand. Yeah. You know, like I say, I tried to break this one, 
and this one is lighter. So this Glock, I've really, you know, by the time it, you fold it up, it, it's really a small package. You know, that doesn't take up much room at all. You, you know, after using that one, the only thing I don't like about it, I, I actually do like that shovel a ton. The only thing I don't like about it is when you're chopping with it a little bit, yep. it, um, it'll it turn yep. and it will loosen up because it, you yep. screw it to tighten it up, right? And mm -hmm. it will loosen it, the head up on it and the yeah. handle will collapse. So I don't dig that. Yeah, you yeah. know, all things considered. This is probably the most versatile all around tool. You know, the edges are sharp. I can chop, I can cut grasses and things with it. Right. I can dig with it in different positions and I can saw with it. And, and the weight factor, I think other than the titanium, this is probably the lightest one. Glock is closer to a 90 degree angle and this one is obviously not a 90 degree angle. And arguably, you know, this angle really will move material faster, I think. I've done a lot of digging with this one. Done a lot of digging with both of these. Of course, we're gonna be in look, Root City. We hit a tree root first lick. But by having them sharp, you know. But, yeah. Didn't one of your buddies grab your shovel one time and cut his hand? Yeah, I had a friend <laughs> pick up my shovel and he slit his hand open and blood is dripping. And I remember the exact words. Who, who sharpens he, he said, a shovel? Who sharpens a shovel? <laughs> I was like, uh, I sharpen. You know me. Uh. <laughs> I might even sharpen a canteen cup if, I'm, if I get bored. Because if, if I can sharpen it, I'm probably going right, to sharpen yeah. it. But you see how it moves that dirt? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's it's moving a considerable amount of material. So if we use this one, see that, that one, it does have more flex in the head. And with that angle, see it's underperforming. It'll get it done, but it's not the same. I mean, you can see I'm already more licks in, right? So it might be worth carrying the extra weight to have something like that. Yeah, when you strike, I can feel like the flexing of it yes. gives. I mean, it's not like it's, I'm not necessarily saying it's gonna break, but it, um, you lose some of that energy on the impact with, with the flex. But this I mean, guy- it's kind of its strength, but it's also its weakness. This guy has a little bit of that, but not, not as much. And then just trying to go through that root there. You just did go through the root. Yeah. I mean, I'm all the way through that. it. Look at that. And that's a big root. As far as durability goes, I don't know. Yeah. Like you're saying, you've seen some that have cracked. I've True. heard, I've heard of these shovels of this um, nut getting cracked. Mm -hmm. But um, this one's had some fair use to it, and it still seems to be pretty good. And again, so. you know, where what are what are the soil conditions in your area of operation? Right. You know, if you're if you're in a rocky mountainous area, uh, you're gonna probably have to carry a pick and then just use the E tool to kind of yeah, I mean, just, shape the hole. Just the overall shape of these shovels is pretty significantly different too. This one's significantly pointier, mm -hmm. um, but it, I think, just the mass of this one and that angle, that slightly more of an angle, seems yeah. to seems to make the difference when really trying to move some dirt and getting through the roots. Like this one kind of glances off. Yeah, it does. Because of that, because of that shape, it's not mm -hmm. as rounded. When this one, straight through. It just shears through. Yeah. And, and that's another reason when people ask, why do you sharpen? That's why I sharpen. Yeah. So in the folding category, we didn't bring one of the old school. We got this one. Yeah, but the old school aims that everybody oh, yeah. and their brother's familiar with, the yeah. trifold. Yeah, similar to this, real similar to this yeah, design. Similar. Yeah, not just without the metal handle. But um, having used the, you know, at this point in my life, having used the Ames and used the new Gerber, I got to yeah. go for that Gerber, you know. This one's not very sharp. No, I've never sharpened that. Yeah, one. this got a, kind of a chisel edge on the side here. That, but That is as it came to me. But this one with just the weight of it, that's a good digger too. So out of the three folders, in, in real time, you know, having compared them side by side, which do you think you would go with? Um, I think I think I'd go with the Gerber. Yeah. It chopped through the roots easier. Um, it is a little heavier than this one, but it's, it's worth it but it's significantly lighter than this one. Yeah. And for performance sake, this one is much much better. Just you the do. overall design. Great. Yeah, I mean this this thing's got the power, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Definitely definitely better. Yeah. 
this one just feels just bounces feels yeah. feels wimpier well yeah. it, you know the the strength in that is the flexibility and that's kind of also the weakness is the flexibility mm -hmm. but there again if we lived in a sandy type of climate you know say florida you'd probably be okay with the glock because yeah. you're not chopping you're not going to hit many. anything really hard yeah yeah they don't even have rocks down there do they no no rocks they've got shells and maybe limestone or something i guess but that's i'll tell you what shell. they do have in florida they have ticks <laughs> and we all know and they have stingrays they have ticks yeah your relationship with ticks is the same as me with stingrays I got out of Evil. Chris's truck. I took five steps and I had like half a dozen ticks on me. I <laughs> That's it. Load it up. I did. <laughs> She's guarding them. Yeah, she is. Careful. She bites. All right. So we've got some options in the non-folding uh, realm as well. And I have some more experience with these. Um, specifically this one. This one's really my, this is the only one that's mine that belongs to me. The rest of them are Alan's collection. This one, um, I've been beating pretty much the tar out of it the last few weeks. And it has done pretty well. Th the steel is thin. And it's pretty soft. It's pretty mild steel. You're probably not going to break the steel, mm -hmm. but you can bend it. And you can see this waviness. That is from chopping through some oak roots. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, I was sitting it hard, really working it, trying to abuse the thing. I've bent this part, um, that little turned over part of the steel where you put your foot on. Mm -hmm. Not that it's that convenient on a small shovel like this, but... Yeah. And by comparison here, we have the... And the cold steel. Yeah, the cold steel version is almost exactly the same design as far as dimensions go, but the thickness of the steel is pretty significant. And I think the quality of the steel yeah. is noticeably better. Now, this is my original cold steel, and that is a handle. Um, oak handle. It's an oak like. handle yeah. I did here locally. Yeah. The original handle snapped in it. Yeah, I think as far as these two go, this is a superior shovel just mm -hmm. because the steel is thicker heavier yeah. duty and i can vouch it's for welded that one. i've been using that thing for years yeah and as far as it's being this one's just folded over and got a pin through it mm -hmm. this one's welded yeah as far as these two go after really work working this i like this shovel a lot i've sharpened the edges so i can chop with it and do whatever i did a video on making a fire with just the shovel and it worked mm -hmm. really well it got the job done but see the link yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but as far as durability goes if you want something you can really really work really beat on mm -hmm. uh the cold steel one's going to be a little bit a little bit more durable than that one and now an alternative to that a couple alternatives watch it pooch um are these this one is almost essentially the same as that russian model that i have mm -hmm. it's just got a longer handle yeah they called that a uh i can't remember how it was a, a trench shovel like that. trench it's, shovel it's different than the other shovels just because it has a longer handle yeah it does have some spot welds on it which is better in my opinion than just a pin i modified but, the handle a little bit you can see where i scraped and yep I, a little more of a stop here a so ball can, on yeah, the end yeah hand. yeah probably the same soft steel same steel yeah. it does have a more of a uh, like a painting coating on top of it pretty thick I don't know what kind of paint that is probably but but it does have some paint on top of it that's going to help it keep from rusting because this steel will rust in front of your eyes really really fast it'll rust this fancy thing that is by far the lightest of our shovels because the head is made of titanium and this shovel weighs one pound five ounces this all of this weighs one pi pound five ounce and that is with the sheath that we have made for it the custom sheath that our dog is trying to find here aren't you aren't you girl so we've got a sheath that we've made a real minimalistic kind of horseshoe shaped sheath yeah i'm excited to carry that one and see how it, how it does there we go because you know i had it for a while until we got the sheath done i wouldn't carry it because i didn't have a way to carry it yeah. without cutting things up yes yeah, you want to sharpen it until you get something to protect it with right mm -hmm. but yeah with this it weighs just over a pound oh the I, I think where shovels like this shine is that they are um, a good multi-tool, right? So they chop really well on small things. I mean, you wouldn't want to chop down a great big oak tree with them, obviously. But they're really handy for whacking branches and getting stuff out of your way. Kind of basically like a machete type use. And this titanium was probably really, really hard. Mm -hmm. So it should hold an edge for a long time. Um, but. How does it dig? So in that same bank here, having that 90 degree 
being able to really get in there and chop is pretty handy. Without that, you're kind of choking up on it and you're giving it one of these. Like a boat paddle. Yeah, really, it is. It's like paddling a canoe, you know? So energetically, go ahead and get after it a little bit and then go back in your mind to using that Gerber. What do you feel? Yeah, uh -huh. this is significantly more effort. Yeah. More muscle groups being involved because yeah. I've, I've got to plunge it into the dirt and then I've got to pull it towards me. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not as efficient of a digger right. in that aspect. Uh -huh. I do like, I do like as I'm digging, if I do get into a root, I like the idea of just being yeah. do that. That is that that is super convenient to me, and I think that that works really really well. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, the steel on this is so soft that if you get a really big root or you hit a rock, if you hit a rock with this, it's gonna it's yeah. gonna bend the metal for sure. Mm -hmm. On this one, I don't know if it'll have that big of an issue. It when might. I'm digging up here, it's not if, but when you're gonna hit. There's you, rocks here. You're hitting rocks. Yeah, yeah. guaranteed. Um, but farmer. this one. This one being light, you know, mm -hmm. is easy to maneuver around. It doesn't wear you out in that aspect, but you do have to put some oomph into it to dig it into the dirt. Something this one, like this cold steel, it's a little bit heavier, and this one's sharp. This mm -hmm. one's this one's really sharp. It'll go through. It'll go through some roots, and the weight. That's the one he cut his hand on. Yeah, <laughs> is this one? <laughs> Who sharpens a shovel? He said that as he was clutching his bleeding hand. He let go and the shovel hit the ground and he was like, who sharpens a shovel? Um, anyway, um, having a little bit more heft to this shovel actually seems to make it get in the dirt a little bit easier. So maybe, you know, having a lightweight shovel, I mean, it's nice to carry it because it's mm -hmm. light. But other than that, you kind of want something with a little bit of heft to it. You know, you don't want, you know, something that weighs nothing when you're trying to dig deep into a hard surface you know cut through roots and things you need something with some mass um this one i do see some advantages that longer handle mm -hmm. is definitely helpful especially if you're doing like more of a traditional type type dig you know that kind of that kind of stuff and and having the leverage of the longer handle like that i mean that's handy that's that's definitely something that would be nice to have but then again portability of something like this is is reduced significantly mm -hmm. because of that longer handle. Um, I don't. I I'm intrigued by this one a lot. Yeah. Because of its lightweight, because of its hard hard material, not steel, but hard titanium material. I think it could be a good kind of if you were considering a one tool type option. If you were carrying one thing. If I had to, if I had to pick one of these. Yeah. If I said that's one tool for the rest of your days, what are you going to take? It would be down to these two. Okay. It'd be this light titanium one or the, cold steel. or the cold steel just because it's a more durable, robust steel than yeah. this. I like this one because I'm kind of nostalgic in that, that area. I was born in 1984 yeah. and this one was made that year. So I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. But if I'm being serious, if I had to pick one that I needed to depend on, it'd be either this one or this one most likely. Okay. Um, so out of those two, choose your, your champion. Man, I would probably lean toward the titanium just because a savings of weight and having that little bit extra is not going to help you dig better. Yeah, and that lighter weight. And if I did, it didn't know, yeah, exactly. And chopping it, and weapon use. And it, all that. Yeah, if I didn't know what environment I was going to be sent into, if I had no idea, this the titanium would be a better choice too. What if you're in a maritime operations, saltwater? Yeah. This thing there is going go. to turn into a rust bucket. <laughs> well, that's another thing. Yeah. You know, you can use that as a as a paddle. You really could. You yeah. could strap this onto a longer pole. Oh, we've done it. We made, yep. a, we made a poncho uh, raft and used an e-tool as a paddle. Yeah, and this would be a very good choice for that. In yeah. salt water? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this would be solid. Put some stainless steel screws. I don't know if those are, but if you put stainless steel screws in them, this thing would be legit. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd probably, I'd probably go with this. Yeah, I think so. We we both agree on our choices. That would be my non-folding yeah. choice. You know, uh, my back sometimes slips out and I, I kind of stoop like this. It's not the year model, you understand, but the mileage. <laughs> Been kind of hard on myself. All right, let's dig this. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. You got 12. Which hole's bigger? That's better, yeah. You got 12. Yeah, that's a good idea. Or whatever number you you decide, you choose. What what would be the thing? I saw it. 
You did it. <laughs> and that's, I think, why people like these is they throw them and it sticks and it yeah. makes you feel like yeah. James Bond. <laughs> but the reality is you're going to dig a hole to take a shit in. You're not going to throw it and kill some enemy sentry from behind enemy lines and he don't know you're there. Maybe you're not. You know, right. whatever. <laughs> Let's do 20. Get a real hole. 20 That's sticks. a bit much, isn't it? Okay, what do you want, 15? I don't know. <laughs> Gosh, you said pick it, and then I tell you 20, and you yeah. say it's too much. Well, you know, I mean, i got to fill this back in, you know. I mean, we got erosion, we got the EPA would get involved, <laughs> you know. and I. we got to think about carbon emissions. All right, 12 yeah. it is. One. Two. Three. There's your hole. And I'll do the little clean. See that technique? That is nice. That side hand, that being able to pull things. That is, it's like a hoe, yeah. Yeah, I like yeah. it. That's nice. One. Two. Definitely slower. And we hit a root. All right. Clean it out. That's only fair. You gotta clean, clean out your hole a little bit. See what kind of hole we got. I think it's pretty clear who our winner is as far as digging capabilities. I what mean, do you think? Yeah, I mean, obviously, that is a uh, significantly bigger hole on the right from the Gerber. But you can't do that. From a user standpoint, this one works me to death. Yeah. This one seems pretty effortless. You know, you just kind of, and it's more even with your body. Swing and pull. Yeah. Yeah. And look at, well, just cover and conceal. See how much easier that is to shake ground with. One-handed. You know I gotta go with the Gerber, man. Wanted to press it into service as a weapon, okay? It's gonna be slower, but it, it could still, it could still definitely cleave, mm -hmm. right? So what would this do that this one wouldn't? Valid point. I don't know. You know, failure points, wood can break, but you could fix it in the woods, right? Yep. With a with a multi-tool? Yeah. Or even just itself, you could probably use it to fashion yourself. And if, if this broke, I don't think you could repair it. No. Okay, so the winners, in our humble opinions, are the titanium Russian model and the the current issue nato thing i think they're still issuing that the go-to and a lot of people want to want to chop with these shovels and we have a couple of these with an edge on them so we're going to do a little chopping to explore that part of it but you know i keep going back to the fact that a shovel's primary job is to dig right it's a soil relocation apparatus that's a and very technical term it is there. and when we choose our tools based on that practical application you know i come up with this that that gerber outperforms all of these as a digger in terms of the the fatigue i felt the expenditure of my energy and muscles definitely not as efficient with the straight handled models so this one hasn't been sharpened yet we'll use one that is sharpened the old cold steel model those will be our two cutters one from each category a folder and a non-folder let's see how they chop what are we going to name this thing? I, I haven't decided a name for it yet. You know, normally I can name name a critter pretty quick, but nothing has jumped out there. I thought I thought Alan's companion was a good name. Ace Ace. Yeah. 
Yeah, AC. Kay's uh, companion, Casey. I was going to name her Nibbles. Nibbles. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a real tough name, you know. Yeah. Oh, don't, don't, don't make me sick Nibbles on you. <laughs> Nibbles attack! <laughs> Nibbles! I've always kind of thought of myself as a minimalist. I really enjoy, you know, not having much stuff. Well, one, I, I get really irritated carrying a bunch of crap. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it bothers me. Um, I noticed that about you. Yeah, you're right. Like, almost to the point of, like, dude, you don't have enough crap. You don't have enough crap. I know, and I, it's, a, it's a constant debate, you know, inside my own mind of, like, comfort versus, well, you're going to be uncomfortable on either side. You're gonna, either going to be uncomfortable when you lay down to sleep at night, or you're going to be uncomfortable carrying the crap. So, which one do you want to be more comfortable in? Um, I don't know, but I've, I've always been kind of a minimalist, and that's what that's why these shovels like this type of this design of shovel this real simplistic design has kind of appealed to me because this is is essentially a multi-tool this is not as good as this for digging so for the sole purpose of digging if that's what you're carrying a shovel for which is why you, that's why you're going to carry a shovel for the most part that gerber there is hands down better than this So I could very easily get through this in probably two whacks, you know, if I was a little bit more controlled, a little bit more focused on where I was contacting it. Mm -hmm. I could probably get one here and one there tree done, most likely. So do you just go around murdering trees in your spare time? Yeah. Is yeah. that, that kind of how you roll? It makes me feel good about things when I, okay. you know, kill a few innocent trees each day. Now this... Just off the bat, I know that I'm not going to want to swing this as hard as I would swing that. It's just uncomfortable to hold on to. It's kind of unwieldy. And gangly. I would want to put two hands on it, which I could definitely do with that as well. Mm -hmm. But just to keep it fair, I'm going to just single single hand here. Okay. I mean, it gets the job done. It cuts. Effectively, it's just much less comfortable. It's much more awkward to swing this like a machete. Mm -hmm. All right, here. so let's say, let's say this was my one tool option, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to use this to do some finer carving. You could hold it like so, but in a similar manner that an ax is kind of awkward to do that with, mm -hmm. just because it's just not designed really to do that. Because it's curved because it's curved, yeah. you know? What I would do is drive it into the wood like that, mm -hmm. into this log, and then pull the stick, and I can very quickly cut through this piece of wood like pretty simply. A precise thing yeah, like that. a really precise carving if I needed, needed to notch something. Like a trap trigger. Yeah, or make shavings for a, um, for like feather sticks, mm -hmm. for a fire process wood, mm -hmm. with a good sharp edge on this. There's no reason why I couldn't feather this out to expose so, yeah, some surface area. I, I think a lot of the things that people like to do, the cool factor with the e-tools, yeah. is more of like a worst case scenario where for some strange reason... That's all you got? You end up with an e-tool and no knife. I don't know how that would ever happen because we generally have more than one cutting edge on us. Yeah, I typically... The only reason that would happen is if I purposely put myself into that situation, which... Mm. You know, I do, but yeah. but but I'm kind of an oddball, right? Um, say that again. Yeah. <laughs> so, I know this man. We're we're kind of weird. Yeah. But so I do purposely put myself into situations like that. But in reality, this is not the one I have. Mm -mm. You know, I just can't think of an actual situation why I would only have this one thing. I had somebody tell me not too long ago, "You're not normal. And your friends are definitely not normal." I said, "Thank you." Because I've seen normal, normal, and normal is weak, <laughs> sheep, and it sucks, and I want no part of it. I want. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're elite. I, I always I always say that I, I tell that to my son sometimes. Uh, I'll talk to him about some philosophical type things, and I say the world is full of lazy, wimpy, you know, uh, of people that just you just don't want to be like that. Your job, your sole purpose in life is to not be one of those lazy, wimpy people. <laughs> that's, right. that's it so so after looking at both of these fold and non-folding models the ones we've chosen of each if you had to choose between these two which would you choose and why try to keep it brief 
about 15 minute explanation will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, after using both of them side by side, here I would pick this one, and this is why. I would pick this one because I think it's um, it's more versatile in the fact that it can do more than just dig. Mm-hmm. Um, the second and maybe the primary reason why I would pick this is because I just enjoy using it more. Like I don't I don't enjoy using this. I understand it digs faster and more efficient. I just mm-hmm. don't I don't enjoy holding this in my hand. <laughs> it's it's plasticky you know, rattly yeah. kind of stuff. I just don't, I don't like it. Um, yeah. And I think there's something to be said about just personal preference too. Is this, is this that much slower? I mean, how fast do I need to dig the hole? You know what I mean? I don't yeah. know. You yeah. know what I mean? Is it that much slower? Uh, you know, I don't think so. Not necessarily. I don't necessarily. look at it from a speed perspective, but from... Uh, efficiency? Yeah, I'm all about efficiency. Yeah, I agree with that. Well, and okay, it, give me the camera. And if I'm digging... Flip it around. You tell me, though, if you had to pick why and why. 15 minutes say, or less. I would so first, <clears throat> I'd like to thank uh, all of the members of the committee that have come here tonight and allowing me to speak. Uh, my name's Alan. Uh, I'm a Leo. I enjoy sharp things and moonlit sharp walks jumbles. on the beach and small animals. And tiny, tiny white dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, seriously though, uh, so if, if I'm choosing my equipment, right? I'm always, the e-tool is the one thing I'm always like, man, do I even really want to carry that? Do I need it? And if there's more than one dude, we don't all need to carry one. I'll be like, you carry the e-tool, I'll carry this other thing like an ax. I would would probably go with the Gerber simply because I'm going to dig if that's what I'm carrying it for and this is going to dig better. It's It's going to save me time. It's going to save most importantly energy, you know, and wear and tear on the body. This just didn't, like digging, I could, it was such a marked contrast a lot more effort right like this was yeah i was working right yeah and uh you know if i'm using this thing i just want to get the digging done right now i totally get what you're saying like this one does not have the failure points and it does have um you might lean toward this for multifunction and robustness in the long term and there's nothing that can happen to this that i can't fix mm-hmm. there is some things that could happen to this that i couldn't fix but you've seen me dig with a digging stick and a rock in my hand and still get it done and get it done yeah. so like i'm not out of the game i'm carrying that's why we have opposable thumbs right we're tool users and so if i'm carrying a digging tool it's because i want to dig more efficiently than i could with a digging stick or some primitive method so i would probably go with this and i i totally see all of the the reasons why someone would choose this and it's not right or wrong. It's kind of like a lot of things. I would disagree. You're wrong. It's like a it's like a <laughs> pair of shoes, and that's where we're at in our culture. It's like nobody. It's like nobody can disagree, or you're right or wrong in fighting about it. No, it's, you shut up. You know, <laughs> it it really depends. You know, it always goes back to Met TC. Like, what are you doing? What is the thing that you're doing? You know, and where are you doing it at? If I'm in Florida, then yeah, that I could roll with that because I might be slashing through that hellacious palm frond tick infested hell yeah, on that if that's, peninsula if that could be your machete then that yeah. that in florida makes sense mm-hmm. up here where it's where it's more rocky this is not going to get you very far yeah. di- here's something yeah. to th- think about um I, when i worked for the navy um i have one of the shovels they used real shovels like mm-hmm. long handled actual shovels yep. when that was the mission right. if the mission was to go in and actually dig yeah. something you they carry brought an engineer shovel they brought a real yeah, shovel exactly. you know what i mean and right. the one that was one guy's responsibility if to you carry need a sledgehammer shovel. you bring a sledgehammer yeah that, you they did cutters, and that's, bring a bolt cutter. that's that's not a joke they the, a guy had to carry a sledgehammer mm-hmm. a guy had to carry a shovel or whatever you know what a mission mission dependent cross of level all yeah of your, uh, but you spread that stuff out because you're working as a team you're working as a unit yeah a sole individual that is going to be much more likely to be carried along right definitely that's that's the point of it but if you take this off the table and we're we're talking this world non-folding definitely the titanium yeah because you know as we all know ounces equal pounds pounds equal pain it adds up this looks cool yeah super cool looks cool and And that that uh, to be honest that really matters so would dig this one way more yeah Yeah. uh if if you were if you could find a chick that was in the shovel i don't know but (laughs) 
I don't know if I'm into chicks that are into e tools, but you but don't anyway. Have to be lonely at preppersonly.com. <laughs> Preppersonly.com. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's where you find that kind of what, girl. What was I talking about? <laughs> uh, if the zombies were to come, yeah. which, I mean, not if, but when the yeah. zombies come, right. which one of those would you pick? For zombies? Yeah. Oh, the titanium <laughs> version of this. Because the, the lighter tool is faster. Oh, it's super fast. You know, super fast recovery yeah. on your slashes and parries and thrust yeah. and all that. Yeah. yeah, definitely. For zombies, titanium all yeah. the way. Yeah. Easy cleanup, probably. Yeah, easy, easy. Yeah. You wash that off in the sink, no problem. Dip it in the pond. And having seen those that had the collars where they sheared off, it does in the back of my mind. That's in there. It gives me a little pause, but that's why the primitive skills, you know, that's what. That's the ultimate safety. Yeah, net. you're not going to die if no. your shovel breaks. Right? Not going to die. Yeah. I'm going to move this back to my my small little patrol pack and put it on there. It has been yeah readmitted because of of this little effort we did today getting out and doing this it really caused me to to rethink and revalue this thing and there's so many variables to it like i live here my lifestyle is what it is and somebody else living somewhere else they might they totally might. different yeah you know for instance if you're operating in a in a deep snow environment you should absolutely have a snow shovel yeah and they make them you know yeah. that fold up and break flat, down and big, all that yeah, move some serious snow yeah you, you must have a shovel for that like yeah. that's that's an environment that's a, a need to have thing and not a nice to have mm -hmm. and in, in these mountains it's like eh, it's nice to have but i mean it's not going to make or break my survival sure i first got started in all this back as a kid i'd run out there with literally nothing mm -hmm. you know I'd, I'd be the stone age guy doing the stone age stuff yeah and it didn't take long to realize why we while we're not doing that anymore <laughs> yeah that's right you know like yeah. it's, it takes about a half an hour before yeah. you're like wait a minute <laughs> as soon as somebody showed up with a sharp piece of metal they were yeah. like yeah we're not doing that anymore we're so doing that. so when i did um this is what comes to mind when i think about that when i did uh when i was on alone the beast mm -hmm. I, I had to cut a tree down and when i say tree it was a sapling like you know maybe that big around mm -hmm. or something a pretty hard wood right um and i had to use a shell to cut it down right and it took me a it, hot minute it took me easily half an hour to score to scratch all the way around it mm -hmm. deep enough where i could break it over and it was still a nasty you know cut when if i had that if i had this shovel that's not even really made for that mm -hmm. i could have went whoop, whoop, done two cuts <laughs> yeah yeah half an hour three seconds <laughs> and time matters you know when yeah. you're out in the field time matters yeah. you have x amount of usable daylight and you're doing all these tasks yeah you're trying to you know procure food you're putting up more yeah more fire fuel you're you're improving shelter improving mattresses and these tools help with that stuff mm -hmm. i was just using this to do this uh, fence project to dig the wire in this is an old issue item it's uh stamp date is 1995 and in this part of the world I find that I use this a lot. There's a whole lot of utility to something like that where e-tools would break. It would just be beyond them to handle some of the heavier things like rocks. This does well. It is a chunk of weight, but my Becker patrol pack that I have here, which is the finest pack ever made in my humble opinion, it has these uh, openings in the pockets where you can shoot your handle if you want to carry a long thing like a medic. Hey guys, I really appreciate you watching. Make sure you hit the thumbs up and we'll see you on the next video.